the highest award that I give out ever in my life. I, I want to start it within this membership. I call it the Joe Lewis Black Belt Honor Roll. What it, it comprises of primarily, you have to be with me like a minimum of 25 years. I think that's adequate dedication. I try to make the award, I try to make the award symbolize something other than the fact that you're a black belt or you're black belt under me or you won a world title or you've got a school that's real successful or you started your own organization. I would try to want to go beyond that. Uh, this guy started me in 1976. Uh, some years later his instructor was killed so I sort of adopted him and his whole family. I was proud of the fact he came to me one day and he says, Mr. Lewis, I kind of want to learn the full contact stuff. I said, well, you know, it's a rough line of work, but we'll play with it. So we started doing private lessons. And I like working with him because he's an extremely fast learner. And I realized later, this sucker reads a book about every other day. So he was like really well self-educated. A well-read person. I've always admired that. Later, he started his own school. He converted the school into what I consider the largest organization in America, something like 2,100 schools. It's on a service organization called NAMA, National Association of Professional Martial Artists. Professional Martial Artists. I was kind of proud of the fact that he went to Europe on the WACO, the United States National Team, and he won gold medals. He became a legitimate world champion. And his younger brother turned out and did the same thing. So I go, wow, that kind of runs in the blood. But he's been able to help many young martial arts school owners take their schools that weren't making money. Because folks, if you can't pay your bills, we're the ones going to close. I don't care how good a teacher you are, or how good your students think they are, if they don't have a place to train, see, that's the end of the road. So your school must survive. We put a too much emphasis on how good are your students rather than can you keep those doors open. I think one kind of complements the other. So I've admired this man's work. The thousands, the thousands of martial artists that he's turned on to a new vision in the martial arts. This person is what I consider a real leader. And leadership is not something that comes easy, especially in the martial arts community. Uh, I could go on and on and on about his resume, but the main reason I give out this award is because it's coming from my heart, not necessarily what you've accomplished, not necessarily what you're giving back to the martial arts. But I give it because I love these people, I respect them as a friend, and I'm proud to say it happens once more. This is one of my black belts, Mr. John Gray.
that for a second. You know, there's a lot of talk about heroes in our country right now. And there's a distinction of what a real hero is. But there are heroes on many different levels. The kind of hero I'm talking about is a hero that really inspires you to be a better person, to achieve more, to strive harder, to reach your potential. Joe Lewis affected me that way, affected a lot of my friends and people I knew before I ever met the guy. He did a three-part series on Angular Attack in Professional Karate Magazine. I see heads nodding. I, I read that so many times and underlined so many times and taught it so many times that when he came to the school when I was a brown belt in 1976, had I had the courage to actually talk to him about it, well, I could have really had a good conversation. <laughs> but instead, he lined us all up and we started to spar. As I bowed, I was thinking, Jesus Christ. <laughs> 76. Jesus Christ. And I did something, you know, God knows what. And I was a very good brown belt. I mean, I trained really hard. And he hit me, and I went down, and we wrestled, and got up. He said, I hit you in the forehead so it wouldn't hurt so much. And I said, Oh, God. <laughs> parts of my face to hit. <laughs> and I just stayed away from the guy. Because it was wild. He. And, and here goes to my next point. I got to know Joe very closely in later years, but this is my first understanding of the depth of his generosity to his friends. If Joe Lewis is your friend, you've got a great friend. You never have to look over your shoulder. My instructor was going through a real hard time. And he came to town to live with the guy for six months and help him through that time. And beat on us. <laughs> and the beaches and the stuff that Joe Lewis, Mr. Hollywood at the time, was doing. 1984, I was a third degree black belt. Teaching a lot of different places. I didn't have a school. I was teaching at college. I got a phone call one day from Mike Anderson. Joe Lewis is here. I want you to meet him. I want you to host a seminar for him. Actually, my friend Gary Daniels called him. Some of you may know Gary from the films. He was a... Uh, my roommate at the time. And Gary was, you know, can I go with you, John? Can I go with you? And we went, we met Joe. We go out to the baseball little league stadium where Joe is laying on the bench sunning himself. <laughs> and we were like, hi, hi, hi. And he didn't talk to us for a while until finally he mumbled something from the bench and sat up and we were in his presence. And shortly thereafter, we started working on seminars together. And I did ask him one day, can we spar? And everyone's stopping. What? We spar? I don't do that point. Uh, Expletive deleted. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I trust you. And I did, and I do, and I always do. I said in the beginning, this is a weird night. From that moment forward, the impact Joe Lewis has had, now visually, had very little to do with martial arts in the evolution of my life. It had to do with confidence. It had to do with establishing a standard, the highest possible standard, and achieving that. It had to do with bringing my brothers and I closer together and really helping us understand what leadership meant, what family meant, and what contribution meant. And what Joe did for us really, as I've told him over and over again, was far beyond technique. We trained for five years on a steady basis. I lost all kinds of brain cells. But I picked up a lot of confidence. And the standard that I've always worked towards in the martial arts was to make him proud. And this goes back to why I think tonight is weird. If you'd have told me when I was 16, 17 years old, I can see myself having a dream, wait, I say, you going to the gym and say, I had the weirdest dream last night. You know, I was like, it's a bowling alley. And we're there, Joe Lewis is giving me a book. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the kind of dream you have as a kid. And this is weird. And I tell you, and this is important for you to understand, I, I think sometimes that uh, you resist this. Fine man who's your senior comes up here and says he loves you and makes efforts to help people understand that. And we all have our schools. Your school is 
nationwide, if not worldwide. And we love you too. Thank you.